Whew, good morning. Man, I just want to start off by telling you this morning, the devil is a liar. And do not you believe the lies that he tells you. Do not let doubt creep into your mind. Do not start doubting. My coffee is great this morning. <laughs> and the reason I'm saying not my coffee, the doubt, doubt. Because I woke up this morning, I snoozed my alarm, I miss snoozed my alarm by switching it off, and I slept a little bit longer than I should have, about 20 minutes longer to be exact. And it seems one thing that still needs to change is when I lay longer than I should have, my back used to have this tendency to get sore with no laying or no snarks, no darny bit. And when I got up, my back was a little bit on the sore side. So what happens in that instant after yesterday's fantastic testimony and God's magnificent healing that occurred? A thought of doubt entered my mind for a moment, going, Lord, I thought we dealt with this. So the thought goes, no, this can't be. And then I came to the second bit going, no, Lord, we dealt with this. I was healed. I have been healed. As per 1 Peter to your word, I have been healed by the stripes of Jesus. Through his stripes, I have been healed. And then I started walking, and as I'm walking, my back feels great. Still a bit of, there was a bit of pain, but I think it was no skiffle. You know, you can't expect, if, if, I, if I sit here and I flick my finger in my eye, I can't go, God, I thought we healed this. No, but that, that's, that's a silly example, I know. But you understand what I'm saying? That's like accidentally stick yourself with the spelt, man. It was one of those instances, but I quickly can creep in. Anyway, not the message for the day. I just wanted to start you off with that. Remember, don't doubt. Don't doubt God because of a moment of something occurring. Don't do that. Today brings me to, what is it that you have? What you, You're sitting in a space where you often ask God for more. More stuff, more skills, more abilities, being able to be better at certain things. You ask these things. And then my question is, are you currently using what you have, what you have been given? Do you see the value of that which you have and do you exercise whatever it is that you have? If you can already pray and you ask God to be a better prayer, are you praying already? That is an example for that. But I've heard some people say many a times in my life, I've said it. Yes, I have. Whew, I haven't done that in such a long time. I wonder if I still can, especially when it comes to instruments. I've heard it a few times. I've said it a few times throughout my life. And it's interesting that, you know, we start wondering that, but we don't pick it up and do it. But the thing about that is, if you're not going to use it, you're going to lose it. Job says it beautifully in the very first chapter. He says that God gives and God takes away. He says in uh, verse 21 of Job 21, he says, Naked I came from my mother's womb and naked I shall depart. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised. I love this. Because this is already in the moment where Job stuff, where the devil started taking Job's stuff away. And he still says, he still says, the Lord gave and the Lord took away. Not that it was the Lord in this instance. Remember, God good, devil bad. May the name of the Lord be praised. And, and um, Paul writes so many times in the New Testament. We praise the Lord in our infirmities. We praise Him for our infirmities. Because remember that God is strong when we are weak. And then verse 22 here is very, very lacquer for me this morning. It says, In all things, Job did not sin by charging God with wrongdoing. He didn't point to God going, Lord, what are you doing? He didn't do that. And how often do we do this? So if you don't use it, right, you're going to lose it. And the reason I say it this way is if you tie your arm to your body, any arm, to your body, you tie it in such a way that you have absolutely no use. You can't use your hand, you can't use your fingers, you can't use nothing, nada, nothing. After a certain amount of time, you're going to use the entire use of your arm. Hand, fingers, others, that arm's going to be useless. It's going to mean nothing except it's going to be a dangly piece at the side of your body. 
if uh, an example that I was thinking of people who are stuck in wheelchairs for a long period of their life or bedridden people who are stuck for a long time in their life they they their body starts to deteriorate the muscles in the legs of people in wheelchair for argument's sake mm -hmm. often start to deteriorate you've seen many of people where they got small thin legs mm -hmm. who I've, heard, I've spoken to people and said, dude, this is just a weird dangly bit on my body. It, it doesn't do anything because I can't use it. So if you don't use it, you're going to lose it. And I'm speaking in the physical now, but I want to speak more on, on other sides as well. You know, in, in Job 42, right at the end, when it comes near the end, you know, Job sitting, his wife coming to him, his friends coming to him saying, you know what, just curse God and die. And then Job eventually starts sitting and he starts questioning God. And then God comes back and God goes, who do you think you are? Who is it? You know, and in Job 42, Job just replies afterwards and he says, I know now, Lord, that you can do all things. In verse 2. Uh, yeah, in verse 2. No purpose of yours can be thwarted. So you can't, you can't stop what God is going to do. He says in verse 3, you asked who is this that obscures my plans without knowledge. And then Job confesses, surely I spoke of things that I did not understand. Things too wonderful for me to know. So often when we question, I think we are in the same space. God is busy doing some stuff that is too great for us to understand. And that's why it's weird. That's why the place that we are in is weird. That's why the position that we are in is weird. That's why we may be looser. Often it's not, in all honesty. Often it is pretty much for me a use it or lose it scenario. God, why have you taken this away from me? Because you didn't use it. Answer is simple. You don't need to spend a lot of time thinking about it. You just need to think a little bit. Remember yesterday, I think I mentioned it yesterday. If you start applying a little bit of common knowledge to the word, it breaks open in many aspects already so easily. When the Holy Spirit is worth even more so. So I say these things today because God has shown me many a times, and this time in a lesson before it was too late, that if you... If you don't use it, number one, you're going to lose it. But when you ask God for something, remember that He's going to give you opportunities to do it, to exercise it, to be whatever it is that you're asking for. If you ask God for to be more gracious, to have more grace with people, He's going to present you with opportunities to apply say the grace. If you ask God to... Be able to bless people more, whether it is financially, whether you are a good cook, whether you are an artist, whatever. God is going to bring to you opportunities to bless with what you have, I believe, before He increases. Because of, where the word says, if you, you've been, you, you stewarded well, I can't think of the exact word now, but when you steward well what you have, with little you were trustworthy, let's use that word. God remember the word. Lord, what was the word? Anyway, with little you were trustworthy, more shall be given to you. It's, in, it's one of the parables Jesus uses. I think it's Matthew 24, 25. Anyway, so he gives you more. If you ask God to be a better prayer, to be able to pray better, or yeah, better normally is what, what I've heard people ask. He's going to present you with opportunities to pray for people or with people. And in those moments... You know, when you ask for these things, you've got to be ready to step out. Because in my personal experience, God doesn't often present me with opportunities that is inside my comfort zone. Because when you ask to increase, you know, the increase is very rarely inside your comfort zone. My experience again. So you're going to have to step up and be courageous. Be of good courage, as the Bible says. Step out and pray for that person. Praying is one of the things that I'm speaking of today because it's something that's been on my mind as well. Especially seeing the effect that a man, that a man who knows and believes, that I feel that I need to catch a wake up on the level of my belief and faith. Prayed for me and my body got healed. Certain things that I pinpointed were healed. I too want to have that opportunity or to, to have that level of belief and faith. And God will bring it, but he's going to present me with opportunities to believe more, to have more faith in whatever aspects that I ask of him. So how do you know it's an opportunity? My red light shines when my heart starts thumping like duck, man. You don't have mole. And then I just get this thought as well, like, there's an opportunity. Go pray for this person. Go tell this person that. Give this person money. Whatever. whatever. That's, that's mine. So we've got to learn to see or find out. Be aware. Be sensitive to what the Holy Spirit does. Because your red light might not be the same as mine. But remember, use it or you're going to lose it.